Just because something's better than the standard Western diet doesn't necessarily mean it's optimal. If I have to supplement, is it really the most ideal diet for me? Why are you not vegan anymore? You did your research on me. Did it fix the physical symptoms? 100%. You were vegan for 10 years, weren't you? Mm hmm Why are you not vegan anymore? You did your research on me. Yeah. <laughs> I was a vegan for, for a while. Um, it didn't love me back. It worked for a while, and I think that's... that's and I, I, my first book was called Keto Terry, and it really was that exploration of being that health nerd and trying something new and feeling great and doing it in a whole food based way and then evolving from it and realizing it didn't love me back. And just because something's better, meaning just because something's better than the standard Western diet, which it certainly was, doesn't necessarily mean it's optimal. And it's okay to pivot. It's okay to evolve. Um, so for me, I talk about it in Ketotarian, but it's, I wasn't getting the complete protein that I needed. And a lot of the proteins that I was getting really wasn't working for me on a digestive standpoint. It just was like a lot to digest. It was kind of irritating my system. And there were some nutrient deficiencies from a bioavailable iron standpoint, bioavailable B vitamins, like folate and B12 standpoint, and true vitamin A, retinol, which you cannot get in plant-based form. Now, in theory, I could have supplemented with all of those things. I could have supplemented with iron. I could have supplemented with B12, which I was. And I could have supplemented with vitamin A, which I was. But this, there's synthetic mainly. The, the retinol that you're getting from supplement form is synthetic. It's not in its whole food form. So the question that I posed to myself was, if I have to supplement, is it really the most ideal diet for me? So I have many patients that are vegan for various reasons like religious and ethical reasons and we want to make them the best vegan or vegetarian if they're vegetarian food protocol for them but for me i was able to pivot out of that where i could still be predominantly plant-based but still be omnivore and feel amazing so that's that was my journey what were the physical sort of symptoms that you experienced that made you awaken to the idea of pivoting out of being vegan? It was fatigue more than anything. It was fatigue, brain fog, and digestive problems more than anything. And I thought, you know, it was just me. And, you know, I evolved from it. I have a, not to get super sciencey on you, but I have a double MTHFR gene variant, which just, we all have different gene variants, right? But this is one of those gene SNPs or single nucleotide polymorphisms that we can measure. We quantify on labs. We get raw gene data from something like the different um, genetic tests that people get, like Ancestry or 23andMe. We can look at their own genetic bioindividuality. My body is not as good in that way at methylating, meaning that specific MTHFR gene has a lot of science behind it. Basically, I'm not as good at converting folic acid into folate. I'm not that good at bringing this inflammatory protein down called homocysteine. Many people have this, and higher homocysteine levels, even slightly elevated, is linked in the research to increasing the blood-brain barrier permeability, basically contributing to, in part, neuroinflammation. So people that are going through things like brain fog or different inflammatory problems or fatigue, oftentimes homocysteine is implicated in that. So for me, to get those levels optimal, bringing in things like wild-caught fish and grass-fed beef, and more soups and stews with like bone broth based soups and stews, like collagen based things. Loved my body back tremendously. Did it fix the physical symptoms? 100%. So, it, and that's the thing is like it's science and art. Like, not for all, for all of my patients that are, are vegan and vegetarian, maybe they're not willing to pivot. So, I want to give them, let's be pragmatic and be the best option for you. But for someone that is willing to test these things out, still be predominantly plant based but still bring these things in, I think can do wonders if you're willing to do it. A lot of people, when they're thinking about being good to their body or, or uh, good to their gut, they'll have like a detox, mm -hmm. you know, like detox juice week or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. your thoughts on, on that? You know, I think it's a lot of probably, well, first of all, it's such an ambiguous term, right? Yeah. It's like you don't know what they're actually talking about when people say that or it's mentioned on a bottle or a protocol that you saw online. Like Seven-day juice detox. Yeah. Yeah, so I, 
I get why people want to do it because we live in quite a toxic world and eat a lot of foods that don't love us back. So people are looking for some reprieve. But I find in many ways, it's sort of like diet culture has snuck its way into wellness in that way, where it's like, it's this yo-yo dieting of the 90s is now in the form of like juice detoxes where you sort of drink and eat like crap and you go and do a juice detox. Uh, to me, it's not what wellness is really about. I want people to have tools whenever they do fall off the wagon, so to speak. I don't even like that term, but when, you know what I mean? When they're up against maybe a stressful time in their life or kind of have been busy and haven't been eating the best and they want to kind of find their center again, I think that's great. I think that juice cleanses, juice detoxes probably aren't the way to go, I would say. Again, better than the standard American diet, maybe, but not necessarily optimal. And my, my point would be in thinking about this is the lack of fiber. I think if somebody wants to eat whole foods and maybe get smoothies because the fibers then blended up in sort of this fruit-based, vegetable-based smoothie, I think that has its place because the fiber will buffer all the fructose that's in there, the fruit sugars. If somebody's having copious amounts of fructose for seven days with no fiber, I don't feel like that's setting them up for success. Where do you go from there? I think after the seven days would be my mind. And if they have a game plan long-term, because look, a lot of people have unhealthy guts. We know that. So sometimes giving your gut a break from all the junk in any form can be good. So it's not necessarily the juice that's the most healthy thing in the world. It's that you're not feeding it junk for seven days. Mm -hmm. So your gut's like, I'll take it. I'll take the juice over whatever, the beer. Your son, your son is sat in the studio, as you said. Um, he sat over in the corner over there, 16 years old. Based on everything you know about the gut, about food, about our emotions, about stress and the, the sort of causal relationship all of these things have with each other. Um, if you could design your son's life to be optimal as it relates to health, can you talk me through the, the I, I was gonna say adjustments, but how you would design that life mm -hmm. for him to be, have an optimal life in 2023 and beyond? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, like, if we're talking specifically my son, it. I look at him now at 16 years old, and I think all of us as parents, like whoever the parents listening to this right now, it's plant seeds by first living it out yourself, right? And living your life out of, as an example, instead of sort of preaching and being dogmatic and being making it about sort of diet, diet culture, I don't think that that's healthy at all, but it really shift your perspective away from all the things you quote unquote can't have, but really focus just back to all the things you get to have and avoiding things that don't love you back isn't restrictive. It's self-respect for your body. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Uh -huh.